Hey everybody! <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have Timber Hawkeye who is here in Seattle. Woo <laughs> In my house. I know. Normally we do this over Skype and I I'm know. sitting facing a screen and I see you blurry sometimes, but now yeah. you're right here. It's pretty wonderful. And I look clear. Yes. <laughs> All right, so you're coming here to Seattle and you're talking. Are you going to be talking about your new book? Yes. Uh, Yay! Uh, February 26th is the launch. Well, it launched January 26th, but February 26th is the beginning of the book tour across the U.S. Yeah. Okay, so tell us the title of the book. Faithfully Religionless. I have a copy of it. Faith Faithfully Religionless. Religionless, yes. Yay. Okay, so people can get that as it's on. They can get it on Amazon it's already now, right? Out. They can get it anywhere. Um, preferably a local independent bookstore, but if you don't have one near you, then yes, Amazon has it. It's available on Audible and iTunes. Um, I recorded the audio myself in San Francisco, oh, which is cool. great. Especially since this new book is a memoir. So it oh. is different than the first book. It's a memoir. It is. Oh, okay. So we're going to have to, can you give us kind of a highlight? So <laughs> well, I was, was going to ask you, like, how did you even arrive at this point? Yeah. Well, Buddhist Bootcamp was a collection of short stories and letters that I had sent to my friends over the course of about eight years. Mm -hmm. And then I did this book tour for two and a half years across the US, UK and Australia. And when I landed back in not so crazy land, right. um, I was able to kind of write down all the talks and uh, the topics that came up during those discussions for two and a half years. And I stayed in a little cabin in the East Sierras where all this stuff came up and I wrote it down. And it's, it's about my own journey from moving from Israel to the States. And it was my first year high school. I didn't speak a word of English. I'd never heard about any other wow. uh, religions or anything like that. And the book literally starts with me sitting in the kitchen in San Francisco as a teenager and watching the neighbors across the street bring mm -hmm. a dead tree home and decorate it with lights. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. And right. it was so it starts with me getting really curious about all these other religions and right. cultures and races and uh, and and just finding truth in a lot of them. So you were you raised with Judaism then? Yeah, I mean, okay. we, in, in a little town in the northernmost part of Israel where everyone is Jewish. And right. so Judaism was not really a big part of our lives because right. we didn't have anything to prove to anyone or right. anything. And yet when we moved to the States, all of a sudden the fact that we were Jewish became a really big deal. My mm -hmm. parents wanted to celebrate it more and and it, we, like all the family would get together on Jewish holidays, which is something we've never celebrated before. So it was really strange for me that all of a sudden religion became important. Hmm. And, and because yeah. you were, cause, cause they, is it, do you think it was a way to kind of reestablish your roots or like remember? A your... way for my family to connect with yeah. one another. Whereas yeah. I was more curious in everybody else. I wanted to learn about all the other different beliefs, wow. not just, yeah. So it starts kind of. With so that, how, old were you, how old were you when you oh, came? First year high school, so a teenager. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. and it was it was an interesting cultural shock, of course. Yes. Not only did we move from Israel to the states, but to San Francisco. So well, was, that's a culture shock. Yeah, I, were, I used to live in the Bay Area, yeah. and I love the Bay Area, but that's a huge. Cultural yeah, there were shift. three thousand students in my high school, and wow, only a handful gosh. of us were Caucasian. So everything was new. Wow. Um, but mostly, you know, so it kind of takes you through that, and then the lessons learned along the way, and then me wanting to be the all-American kid. And right. whatever that entails and that the all-American man and whatever that looks like and right. you know the condo the house the job and it kind of it takes you through Seattle where I was working a, an, at a law firm and one day decided to sell it all and move to Hawaii which right. is where kind of Buddhist boot camp started with a chapter about you know every month I would write down something I was learning but then what that was like what, what it was like to sell everything I owned move to the islands and quit the corporate world and and simplify my life because it's really about learning to lead a simple and uncomplicated life and realizing that happiness is available to all of us right here and now rather than keep saying oh, i'll be happy when mm -hmm. dot 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 you know not pushing it into the future so um takes you through that and and always kind of bringing it back to 
you know, having, you know, when I tell people I don't have a religion, they automatically assume mm -hmm. I don't believe in God, but nothing could be further from the truth. And there is an interesting and unnecessary connection between God and religion and the Bible and the church. Right. And they're all very separate. Then why take in the moniker of Buddhist boot camp? Why the Buddhist part if you don't have a religion? Um, I wouldn't consider Buddhism a religion in the first place. There's okay. no um, God figure. There is no creator theory. There is no uh, beginning. There's no. It's, it's more uh, okay. of a philosophy. And the reason Buddhist boot camp was called Buddhist boot camp had nothing to do it was every time I watched Fight Club, I think I told you, I thought right. to myself, this is Buddhist boot camp because I learned, <laughs> even though my initial intention was just to lead a simple life mm -hmm. and I moved to Hawaii, I never foresaw that actually me ending up living in a monastery. I mean, it doesn't get simpler than that. Right. So you and were in a monastery I, in Hawaii. I started there and then moved to a Zen one and then came back to Hawaii to live in a Zen temple. And wow. Yeah, so there was always this undercurrent of Buddhism underneath it all. and But even that, I found, because there's over 800 different schools of Buddhism, mm -hmm. so that can get really complicated. And I realized it's not even about being a Buddhist or a Christian or Jewish. It's about being Buddha-like or Christ-like. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the invitation is to, to keep the faith that we have, faith, very faithful, right. but religion less to not necessarily ah, so that's the a need. faithfully religion less, less. that's exactly. the religion less part of it correct yeah and religion you're defining as like but something that has religion. like an organized religion that has the a dogma. greater story you know someone that you're honoring or worshiping, or worshiping and all that right and it's and, and it and religion and really needs to go beyond being exclusive to being inclusive mm -hmm. and i think a lot of religious leaders are starting to recognize that Mm. And so what was really inclusive nice, of other religions, inclusive of everyone, mm -hmm. not just other religions, but <laughs> to not to not have such a strict, you know, rigid lines of what's right. OK and what's not OK. Right. And, and you see very slowly this is actually growing in, in acceptance with the new pope and everything is mm -hmm. there is a very slow but nonetheless progress. Uh, towards being more accepting and I think it's a beautiful thing to see and I think it's the only way religion can survive if mm -hmm. it wants to I don't personally think it's necessary um, I don't have anything against religion but I don't think we need it in order to be ethical yeah and so there are a lot of people out there who consider themselves spiritual but not religious right and that's who this book is for spiritual because, but not religious okay that's me yeah that's a lot of people <laughs> And so it's a lot of people. It is. The book has been out about three weeks now, and the reviews have been incredible because people yeah. are reading it going, I didn't realize I was so faithfully religionless myself. <laughs> so it kind of... You started just, a new religion, yeah. <laughs> a faithfully religionless. Good congratulations. No, it's this... And, and that's Actually, what I Actually, start bowing to you right now. No, no. <laughs> the, the beauty of it is you're honoring your own um, divinity within you and, yeah. and the ability to... And, and recognizing God in everything and everyone else. And it's so beautiful to do that without the dogma, without the ritual, without anybody else right. telling you what to be or what to believe. You're actually kind of creating your own core values. You're writing them down, your own commandments, if you would. Right. Your own precepts and saying, am I living the life I envision? Yes. And it's, it's very freeing, which is why the symbol of the wings and free. This right. is a tattoo I actually got done in Seattle like 13 years ago. To that just, had this, tattoo? this is on my back really wow. yeah and it's to symbolize this um, freedom from anger freedom from ego freedom from religion from all from any just free yeah yeah the only difference is um this was this is better <laughs> the one that i have on my back <laughs> was before this came along so the guy on my back is going Woo <laughs> so <laughs> that's the only difference oh well you can get that redone I kind of like that it's part of the progress. It's not, it's not, it's just, this is better. I like this. Okay, so what is the faithfully part? Because it's hard, I think it's to be faithfully religious. What is it, Religions. what is the faithful mean? Well, faith, so I have a tremendous amount of faith in God and mm -hmm. trust and and not just trust. In, and when I say God, I don't mean the bearded white guy in the sky. Right. Um, or anyone or anything that condemns, you know, bad behavior and condones mm -hmm. good. And mm -hmm. But the we all have faith, whether we acknowledge it or not. If you have plans for tomorrow, you, you have That's faith true, that true. you're going to be here. Because we have right. no guarantees, but we trust that 
that whatever it is that's making our heartbeat right now is going to do that five minutes from now, 10 mm-hmm. minutes, from, maybe even 10 years from now, if you have like a retirement account, that's, that's a whole lot of faith. Right. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's bigger than that. It's faith that we're going to be okay. That if you zoom okay, you've out laughed enough, about the retirement card. Is that like ridiculous to you? <laughs> I, I You're do. laughing at it like is. most of the population because you think that that's a ridiculous amount of faith, or what does that mean? Um, if if we're saving to live our life later instead of now, then it's not in balance. I'm not saying it's ridiculous to count on there being a tomorrow, right. but not for the price of today. Okay. You know, and so balance it out. Make sure you're living plenty now. Instead of saying, I'll go on that vacation when I retire. I'll do that when I retire. I'll do- right. Because you may not even get there and I, you waited your whole life to do something. I have totally, you know, my, my dad died when he was 67. Mm. And uh, he kept on saying, when I, when I finish my work, then I'm going to write this book. And then mm. after I write this book, he had all these plans that were kind of queued up, you know, once he retired. And he died, you know, two, you know, a year and a half into writing this oh, book. Wow. And he was actually in the last chapter of his oh. book, which was so sad. But it's one of those things where that really shifted my attitude towards Good. like why. Now, am I? Am I? Do I still have a, you know fidelity a, a for? Okay, list. yes, I do. <laughs> I, I, I do have that, but it's one of those things that. I do think that you can almost save to a point that, like, for what's the purpose? Yeah. You know, if you're not really enjoying life because not enjoying you're waiting. Life. And you can't take all time. that money with you when you're gone. So, yep. and there's uh, no guarantees. And, and it's not even about just faith in tomorrow, but faith in humanity. Faith mm-hmm. that that there is good in the world, that it is all actually balanced. I mm-hmm. think what happens is if we focus too much on the negative we forget all the positive. And mm-hmm. so my practice is to constantly zoom out and just keep looking at the big picture because it is balanced. It mm-hmm. is beautiful. Mm-hmm. There's always been war. There's always been conflict. And we've gone through so much in our own lives. And yet we're betting against ourselves. We're, like, we think that we're not going to make it through whatever comes next. But I always say if I was in Vegas and I was taking a bet on whether or not you're going to survive what comes next, I will put all my money on you making it through it because you've made it through everything else so far. Right. You're here. And yet we're constantly betting against ourselves. Right. It's Yeah, really it's interesting. interesting. <laughs> I actually think there are very few people that I know like you. <laughs> Do you? I, I'm so <laughs> no, sorry to fixate on this. Have you always been this way as a personality? I just took a Myers Briggs class, and okay. they have uh, they have at the very end they have someone who judges or uh, judges or or perceives, mm. and so there's two different types of personality. And I talk a lot about this, and I don't think it's a built-in hardwired personality That's, yeah, trait. Yeah, they would say it's a personality they, trait, and the opposite of what you know is also true. So, which is yeah, the first no, no, principle? Yeah, no, I'm just curious it. because I actually on that scale of the mm-hmm. Myers-Briggs I'm on like if there's a J or a P mm-hmm. I'm like on the serious J side oh, like wow. almost like if there's there's like clear you know absurdly clear you mm. know <laughs> like on the absurdly clear wow. neutral I'm on that Interesting. super planned organized side and I think that it's it's actually a muscle that we exercise and, and we and you mean to be about spontaneous to be, and yeah. open to possibilities just so. bringing awareness to when you're being judgmental when you're being negative all of you whatever you think is part oh, of your Hardwired judgmental. personality trait, you yeah, know? and and catching yourself and going, whoa, that's not who I want to be. Yeah, and and I forget who it was said, name your demons. So if right. if there's a judgmental part of you, give her a name. It's not judgmental. I'm, it's I'm just, judging. God, and she doesn't she have a clarifies. name. She doesn't have a name. She doesn't even exist. But I'm saying is it's, it's Clarice. That's Clarice. It's Clarice. That's Clarice. Her name, yeah. uh, don't stand too close to the glass, Clarice. <laughs> exactly. The, the invitation is to kind of bring awareness to that and, and notice when you're making a decision out of fear instead of out of love and going, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't want to be that person anymore. Mm-hmm. So in the book, I talk about doing an exercise where you fold a piece of paper in half mm-hmm. and you create a crease. And over our lives, we've behaved in a certain way over and over again, making mm-hmm. decisions out of that same fearful place. And we've created a pretty deep crease. So that, that's like almost our knee-jerk reaction. But it is not our hardwired personality trait it's just a habitual pattern and we can create new habitual patterns so no i wasn't always like this you were so were you on the planning organizing and uh, were so, be? oh hardcore yeah hardcore hardcore and i was very um rigid and strict and locking my door and you know making sure everything now i just let it go and when i catch myself 
making a decision that's not trusting, that's right. not open, that's not. Right. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. And it starts with, with again, it's a muscle that you exercise. So if right. you always put your right shoe on in the morning first, put your left one on, right. just to kind of get in the habit of catching yourself doing something out of habit right. and creating a new one or that's even more you, intentional. Yeah, in, in the example that you get gave, like your, the crease is always like folding over and over. You're like, create another crease, create another crease. And creating paper. a new crease is possible, but it takes more deliberate intention. Right. And that's where mindfulness and awareness and meditation, the, the benefits of all those are not just doing those 20 minutes of sitting, sitting quietly. Right. It's later in the day when something happens at work and you have this pattern of overreacting you catch yourself and go, I don't have to attend this argument. <laughs> right. I can just let it go. Right. And so the book is really about the beauty of letting go, letting go of judgment, letting go of fear, letting mm -hmm. go of ego, letting go of all the things that hold us back, mm -hmm. um, of all the ways we've identified ourselves as someone we don't actually want to be, mm -hmm. either if for the sake of impressing our parents or mm -hmm. others or for all the quote-unquote wrong reasons. Okay, so how did you make this journey? Because I think, I mean, I think... If you're on a spiritual path, that's where you want to be. That's the destination. I think that most people are trying to like let go of ego, let go, because mm -hmm. then you can be more present. You can be yeah. enjoying life more, all the different things that you talk about. But if you were to... Now I'm going back to my planning, organizing part, so please forgive me. That's all right. But if you're going to planning, or, you know, if you were to actually look and say, okay, if we, here was the map that mapped my life out. Like, here's what it looked like. It started with this point. You know, I'm planning my vacation. I'm organized okay. to the point right now where you don't have a 401k. I'm not going to harp on that because, no. <laughs> sorry. Aren't you scared? Yeah, I don't even have health insurance. <laughs> oh, my God. I knew that would scare you. Yeah. The, okay, so how, tell me about the path that you walk from this point to this point. Like, how does one develop a different crease? or One step at a time. Okay, but tell us about your there path. There is no, I mean, the, you got to take happiness and instead of putting it at some point in the future, like I will be happy when I reach that level mm. of awareness, when I let go of ego. There is no letting go of ego. There's actually acknowledging the ego and saying, I see you mm -hmm. and I'm not going to act on your behalf today. Okay. And, and there's also seeing the God within and going, I see you and I'm going to make best friends with you and right. we are going to work on this together. And every moment, every day is a practice. Every time I'm in, in a situation where... You know, I would say you're you're going to continue being surrounded by annoying people and frustrating mm -hmm. situations and, and people pushing your buttons only until you no longer have buttons that can be pushed. Mm -hmm. And then you'll just see them as people in situations, mm -hmm. period. And mm -hmm. and so all of these experiences that we're going through that that push our buttons are actually gifts. They're like, here's what you need to work right. on. And right. a lesson will repeat itself until you learn it. It's just right. one of those things. Oh, so it will. So it's... <laughs> It's not about just, you know, me getting in the car and driving to New York and saying, all right, what bookstore wants to host me? There is planning right. involved, no doubt. Right. So it's not, it's not about being completely careless. It's, it's actually very... Well, I'm not saying, I don't think it's being careless. Yeah, though. okay, good. No, it's, I think a lot it's of being people carefree. Do carefree, I like that better than careless, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so... I'm striving to be more. <laughs> you're, I'm, you're aspirational. <laughs> <laughs> to me, and, seriously, because it's uh, my crease is so deep. Mm. It's so deep. It's it's uh, it's taken a while. Yeah, and I, I actually have taken steps. I would actually I can outline mine in steps. Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm at the point right now where it's almost like this epic boxing match between mm. my ego and this my Fight Club. Yeah, yeah, it, it it completely is like Fight Club where there's this epic battle and it's really hard. And I I have to say that my ego was pounding the crap out of my godlike self and, mm. and and my godlike self gets up again and it's like no it's okay it's okay you know, it's okay I'm, I'm here again <laughs> i'm here again yeah. ready to work with you and it's yeah. just it's 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 an epic battle it yeah. takes it takes a while so that's why i was asking like and the and the one you feed more you know it's it's the voice you listen to more is the one that gets louder or the story of the two wolves whichever one you feed mm. is the one that wins and so yeah. there are so many stories around this internal battle you're not alone at this I we're know. all it's going hard, through though. it it's harder not to acknowledge it. It's harder to just give in to the ego and live your life in fear. So as difficult no, as... No, that's easier to me. Mm, it's easier for me to just To live give, in fear and to okay. constantly worry well, and no, stress. Like it, it's, it's, <laughs> really? It's, it's, okay. <laughs> then this interview is over. Thank you all very much. Next, from no, CJ. Like, how to live with stress in your life. <laughs> My friend and I walked around Green Lake the other day. Mm -hmm. And the way he saw it is that a lot of people, a lot of us are in the zoo. Mm -hmm. and yet the gates are open 
And I got out of the zoo. And I'm flying around. I'm having a good yeah. time. I got my big wings. I'm like, right. woohoo. And I'm going to people going, come on out. Come on. Right. You don't have to stay in your cages. Come. Right. And the doors are open. The doors the open. You can <laughs> just come out. We don't realize the doors and are the open. the people are like, well, when, where is your next meal going to come from? And I'm like, I don't know. Just come. You'll see. Yeah. And they're like, no, I need to know. Where is it going to come right. from? Where, you know, who's right. going to feed me? And where? And I'm like, I don't know. But I, what I can tell you is that I haven't gone hungry. Is that right. there's always food. You just have to trust. Or people, you know, saying, oh, but I can't leave this cage. The, the, the you know, stack of hay in the corner there is so comfortable. Right. Right? And, and I'm, meanwhile, I'm doing cartwheels on the grass. And they're like, right. and, and so there is this weird thing where I'm not showing off. I'm not doing this to, you know, annoy people. But it does, <laughs> people get pissed off, though. They, they don't, do? What are they pissed off about? They, there are those who can be really, really happy for me and just say, I'm so happy you found your joy and you're doing what you love. Right. And then there are those who want to do that, but fear is holding them back. And so my being there is just a constant reminder. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, see, I actually, oh, that's interesting. They piss you, they get pissed off. They actually, people just think I'm scary or just weird. <laughs> no, people just, either they think I'm faking it, which oh. after a while, no, you're not I'm faking not, it. No, I'm if truly... you think that he's faking it, he's really not faking it. <laughs> like you're the, that was, I actually, it's funny because I, I went to, um, the last time I went to East West Bookstore mm -hmm. and I went home and because I talked to a lot of people. I talk, I mean, I've talked to hundreds of yeah, people yeah. and I went back and I mean, there are people who are supposedly the real deal and I'm like, they're not the real deal. <laughs> just because this is my J side. Oh, okay. This is Clarice right, coming right, in. Right, okay. Please. So, so <laughs> I went to yours and I said, no, that's a real deal. Like mm -hmm. you really are the real deal. Like what you say and what you do, it's all... And that's what I, and I talk about that a lot in the book is, you know, Gandhi said that happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are all in alignment. It's all in alignment for you. I and that's, that. and, and I think that's why it's important for us to write down what our core values are mm -hmm. so we can actually see them and then cross-reference it with how we're actually behaving in the world and then seeing, am I living in alignment? Because mm -hmm. if I'm not, it's not somebody else's fault. We're so busy blaming other people for our imbalance but it's it's us and yeah. and people tell me oh i want to save money and i just went on vacation or i want to save money and i just did this or i want to save money but i'm thinking about having another kid or and i'm like you know from the outside there's no right. judgment going you do right. what you want but you're saying one thing and you're doing another but right. what's really important you know um gandhi also said your actions convey your priorities mm -hmm. so look at your actions and you'll see where your money is going, where your heart is going, where your attention is going, where focus, energy, all of that. Mm -hmm. Because if you really, really wanted to do this, if you really wanted to break free, all of your energy would go into it. Right, right. Yeah. And you, was there ever a point where you hit fear when you actually sold all your stuff, went to Hawaii? Oh, yeah. And I talk about that in the book. I say, you know, was I scared to move to Hawaii? I didn't have a place to live. I didn't have a job. Not, of course, but I did it anyway. Yeah. And that's the idea is to not be so scared of fear, mm -hmm. you know, or fearful of, being scared or whatever, just doing no, it No, I know, anyway. fear of fear. I actually yeah. went to a meditation retreat and there was a guy who was freaking out and he had fear of fear. He was fear afraid of fear. fear. Huh. And I thought, wow. But I think we are, well, most of us are just fearful. We are just too afraid to go out because we're afraid maybe it won't work out. What if mm -hmm. people think I look stupid? What if, yeah, what so if, letting what go if? of what people think about you, letting mm -hmm. go of trying to look a certain way uh, because we think that that's the vision of success or beautiful or right. you know attractive or whatever and and dropping all of that it's right. so liberating again i'm already there look at me <laughs> beautiful beautiful i'm already there no so um it's just it's been it's been a wonderful experience it still is um the book is still very young and it's still finding a voice with readers um, who so far receive it with the same intention with which it was written, which mm. is not always the case with a written word. Mm -hmm. But um, I think if you just go into it without any expectations that it's going to be another Buddhist boot camp, but just more like a conversation with me. If we were, if you're listening to the audiobook, for example, it would be like mm -hmm. I'm sitting in the passenger seat next to you telling you a story. Right. Or if we're hiking together and I'm, I'm telling you something about the fire. And that's what I love, actually, what I love about when I went to East West Bookstore and the various events that, mm -hmm. you, that you're be going to go to, I assume that they kind of all kind of have a similar arc. Yeah, sit in a circle like and a we have a discussion. Yeah. And it's, and it's, 
and it was it was almost akin to group therapy. I don't know if you like that or not, <laughs> or a support group. You yeah, know, but it, it felt be, like yeah. that. Like people were coming in and raising their hand and bringing up whatever issues were on their mind, and you were just being real with them and sitting and yeah. just. And sometimes they're like, I don't know. It's not like you have the answer to everything. When I don't come prepared, I don't know what questions what are going to be answered. So I just show up and it always, everyone contributes. And it's just this beautiful space, I think, that we're all really, really hungry for. I know and we if are. if I can provide that, then hey, yeah. I, I did good today. <laughs> all right. So I want to go back to the memoir. So when you were actually writing it, sorry. It's all right. <laughs> I want to go back into the nine months of when you were in the, the cabin. Um, cabin writing I mean, what were, what were the painful, raw parts that you went through and thought, wow, I didn't even realize that this was inside of me until I started writing it? Well, there's a lot of forgiveness going on and realizing that no one has to apologize to you. They don't even have to be sorry for you to forgive them. Mm -hmm. And so it was interesting to write about some of the stuff from my childhood that is painful mm -hmm. and yet write about it factually, not from a standpoint of I was wronged and this was done to me, but... That's interesting. This happened, but here I am. Mm. And this really interesting process of, I'm not angry at anybody. I'm not holding a grudge. Right. Um, it, these, these are facts. I'm not trash talking anyone. I'm just right. sharing. These things occurred, and yet I'm still here. And maybe that's why I'm still here. Mm. And so this beautiful observing what's happening and what's happened without judgment and just, you know, like... There's, and I don't want to give away the end, where there is a moment of a near drowning incident where mm -hmm. I was just observing what was happening rather than reacting to what was happening. Mm -hmm. So there I was just writing all this out and, and there was no emotion attached to it. It was mm -hmm. just, this is, this is it. Mm -hmm. and, and there's beauty in it and there is horror in it, but it's all part of it and it's all beautiful. Right, and not going into the place of judging yourself, judging wow. someone else, but just almost like in some ways we talk. It's interesting because when we tell our stories, right, we want someone to uh, say like, "Look at me, I'm a victim. Look oh, at yeah. me, no, it's, it's awful, that. and and you're to blame, and you're to blame, yeah. and you're to blame." And, and I'm saying I'm not a victim. No one's a victim. We're all yeah. here, and it's exact opposite. It's not even look at me because what I'm hoping and what I'm I'm hearing is that the book kind of becomes a mirror. And everyone reading it sees themselves in these stories and can relate because mm -hmm. this isn't my book. It's our book. Mm -hmm. This is this is our story. And mm -hmm. and I love that we can share that. And it's yeah, it's it's that's I think that's where the freedom comes from is realizing I'm not in this alone. Um and, and the distinction between alone and lonely is in this, mm -hmm. between um faith and, and religion between feelings and emotions. I talk more about that because that's something from mm -hmm. Buddhist Bootcamp. People really wanted to talk about that. The disparity between truths and facts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your truth, my truth. Uh, can right. be very, very different. Right. And we don't have to agree. I don't need to convince you of my truth. Right. I don't need to prove you wrong to be right. You know, like I just letting right. all of that go. Right. And you can tell me what you believe and I can go, well, that's interesting. Right. And that's it. <laughs> just let it go. It doesn't, it doesn't change. It doesn't threaten right. my own beliefs. In fact, yeah. it might expand them to now I know some people believe that. Cool. Well, it's interesting because if I, um, I, if I think about the book that you wrote, the previous one, mm -hmm. the Buddhist Book Camp, and then also the, um, the session that, we, that you did in East West Bookstore, it was about just, there are just some human experiences that all of us go to, yeah. go through, right? Truth and fact. Yeah. You know, all the ones that you've listed or just the nature of being human, mm -hmm. and and to kind of say like I I, I don't you know, like I, don't, I assume that you didn't write it and like and here's what I figured out. No, it's like it's coming from an experimental place. And yeah. go, I've I treated everything like an experiment, and I tried not clinging so tightly to my views and just kind of letting that go a little bit. We talked about that about tension, yeah. noticing tension when we're clinging, and there is it's that same muscle, it's that same crease where the stuff that we're clinging to that's tangible is very closely related to the stuff that we're clinging to. That's our mm -hmm. opinions, our judgments, our beliefs. And and that's why, you know, moving to Hawaii, getting rid of all this stuff, the tangible stuff, really helped me also get rid of opinions and beliefs and thoughts and, and memories and just like, I don't have to cling to anything so tightly. Okay, I just had a major aha. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. At that moment, no, you know, because... Okay, so... Um, 
you know, all the kinds of tensions that you're talking about, you know, whether when you meet with someone that you disagree, all the different things that you just delineated mm -hmm. are part of the human experience. And so is trusting and having faith mm -hmm. and, and traveling throughout life with love. That is part of the human experience. That's the natural human experience. That is a natural human experience. unnatural reaction is to resist it, to fight it. Yeah. To argue, to it, there, that's not it. That doesn't flow. It's against. It's it's resistant. It's, right. And by all means, do it if that works for you. But it. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> that might that make it even sound even more yeah. foolish. No, but it but it is it is our natural state, and we for, we forget it so yeah. easily. And and when you live in that place, in the moments that I can remember, and I'm living from that place, there are just joyous and they're simple things like it mm. just can be like looking at my coffee this morning and looking at the cloud-like shapes that created and merged yeah. and created like it was like this moving abstract art piece when i poured the cream in it which was is just how like children look at thing. everything in the world I yeah mean, and it was happy just, yeah. it was like a really happy moment for me and it was like what 30 seconds of happiness but it was i was super happy yeah. just like Wow, it's like life is art. You know, look mm -hmm. at my coffee with the cream in it. It can be every moment. Can be Everything like can be like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, I love it. So this is how we live our life if we're faithfully relig religionless. religionless. Mm -hmm. I know, it's a, it's a tongue twister. Okay, so look, look, folks, look at the title just so that you can see it really, really clearly. And that's a um, tattoo that you have on your back, yeah. except you would have had it be Namaste. At the heart. Oh, it would, yeah. yeah, yeah, but he's doing this. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to take off my shirt, but... <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that you want to tell us about the book? Um, my hope is that when you're done reading it, you pass it on to someone else. Just keep spreading mm -hmm. it. Um, don't let it sit on a shelf. Just, you know, give it to friends. Um, pay it forward. Pay it forward, book. yeah. It's um, because I published it myself, uh, I was in a lot more control. So I made it available in hardcover and paperback right off the bat. Yeah. So people can have the option, whichever one they prefer. Um, it's available as large print as well, um, and audio and ebook and any any anything. Just, you know, the audio is like five bucks, you know, it's like just. Just, right. yeah, my, my, this is not a money-making machine. This is, right. you know, people ask me, you know, where, where, how do you live your life? And all that, the, the money that the book makes goes right back to the book. It goes right back to spreading the message. Right. Um, I'm not staying in hotels. I told you, I'm sleeping on floors and couches. And um, I don't think the message would have any integrity behind it if I was showing up in a limo, you know, at right. my book events. Hello, just, people! Exactly. <laughs> not, there's nothing wrong with that. No, it's I think just, it's fine either way. It, it's... Only if it's in line with my values. So right. if you wear a fur coat and you're totally okay with it, that's great. But if you're saying you're against animal cruelty and you're wearing a fur coat to an animal rights campaign, then there's a, there's a problem there. I have an that idea of what to do with your book. Okay. Okay, here's what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a marketing person. I think you should oh, and, take and the book. It says to drop the word should from your vocabulary. Oh, but go sure. ahead. Here's what you may consider doing. There you go. Thank Here's you. Here's what I would have opened Don't shit on me. idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it'd be really fun because part of what you want to do is spread the word, right? So mm -hmm. I'd love if like people could write their name and like you know like what page or what their favorite thing was and then pass along. Yeah, Just I've seen it where along. people show up at a book event and they want me to sign their books and I open it to sign and on the side they have the name and date of everyone who's read it That's and it's crazy. like highlighted and marked and yeah, it's. It's, it's just been an incredible gift um, to meet so many people on this journey. Yeah. And I hope to see you guys at the events, wherever yes. you come. Um, the All the book tour um, information is on the website. It's, it's Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank so you much so much, guys. Faithfully religion. Why is it so hard for me to say I this? Faithfully religionless. Religion there you go. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you.